isn't this a beautiful Palm Sunday? At, at least it is where we are here in Louisville, Kentucky. And we welcome you today to worship with us here at Evangel Online. You know, Palm Sunday was the first public appearance Jesus made after he had raised Lazarus from the dead. And look at the crowds that came because they heard what he could do. I wonder how many of them were there the next week. But those who were there were those who loved him for who he was. You know, we can get so busy seeking his hand that we fail to seek his face and know him intimately. Today, as we enter into worship, may our goal be to seek his face and know him. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Come on, lift the hand of the Lord today. Lord, we bless you today, God. Come on, just praise them out of your own mouth, your own words. Lord, I bless the Lord today. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this week, O oh God. Lord, what it means to us, God. Lord, we're so thankful, God. We can come into the house of God and bless your name. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Hallelujah. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestle. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Hallelujah. 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 Say, I will not be afraid. For the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. He shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence today. Let's just ask God to cleanse us and forgive us. Come on. How many of you know sometimes we just mess up? We don't mean to, but we just we mess up. Lay your hand on your heart. Father, we pray your forgiveness in our lives. We pray, oh God, you'll forgive us, Lord, for anything in our lives that's not pleasing to you. Lord, I ask you, God, to cleanse me today. Create in me a clean heart today, God. Lord, let me speak the right words. Let me say the right things. Let me think the right thoughts in Jesus' name. Lord, I belong to you, and I want to live a godly and holy life. And I thank you for your forgiveness. Lay your hand on your head. God, I pray my mind will be filled with the word of God. I pray I shall make the right decisions in Jesus' name. I pray my mind will be renewed and strengthened in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over my hands today, God. Come on, say, Lord, anoint my hands. Lord, we pray, oh God, you'll anoint our hands to help people, to be servants, oh God, to bless, Lord, people, to help people, oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray over my feet today. I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. God, I pray you'll shut the wrong doors and open the right doors in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, the Word of God says, my house shall be called to what? A house of prayer. I want you to lay your hand on somebody right now. Begin to pray for them right now. Speak a blessing out loud. Speak it out loud. Lord, I pray for that one on my right, that one on my left. I pray your favor upon their lives. I pray. Come on, just speak it out. I pray a blessing upon your life. May you be healthy in your body. May you be healed. May you walk with God. May you live closer to God now than you ever have before. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for one another today. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now find somebody else. Pray for somebody else right now. Lord, I pray for, Lord, another person. I, come on, just speak out a prayer. I pray the blessing and favor of God upon you. Come on, church, let's pray today. Lord, we thank you. We call upon your name, oh God. We call upon your name to heal. We call upon your name, oh God, to bring strength and life. Lord, I bind discouragement. I bind migraine headaches. I cast out sickness and disease. And I speak the favor of God upon your life. The favor of the Lord. May you be blessed. May all your days be, be healthy and strengthened in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now lift the hand of the Lord. Let's pray for our country. Lord, we pray. God, for the United States of America. God, move in our nation. God, we pray. God, it's the only hope we have, oh God. We pray, oh God, we sigh and cry for the sins of our land today. God, we pray, oh God, you'll move in America, God, in a powerful way. Now let's pray for Israel. God, we pray you'll bring peace to Jerusalem. We, God, we pray, God, that the wickedness and evil shall come to an end. God, there shall be peace, Lord, in Jerusalem, peace in the Holy Land, peace upon your people in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your favor. We thank you for your strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now pray with me. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, say it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to yell Hosanna three times. 
One, two, three, go. Ready? Hosanna. 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 Hallelujah. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Uh, turn to somebody next to you and say, you're going to be blessed today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We're going to go ahead and look at our announcements at this time. We'll be receiving our communion a little bit later in the service. God bless you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Evangel. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. We have a ton of exciting upcoming events for you and your family that you don't want to miss out on. Men, don't miss the Wednesday morning time of prayer at 6.30 a.m. with Pastor Rogers. This is a great time of prayer and fellowship and is followed with a delicious breakfast. Easter is right around the corner and we have plenty of service times for you to choose from. Our Easter services will take place March 29th through the 31st. Friday and Saturday will be at 6 p.m. and Sunday at 7, 9, and 11 a.m. The Good Friday Festival will take place following a powerful illustrated sermon. There will be games, inflatables, food trucks, and plenty of fun for the whole family. We will also have Easter Day water baptisms available for all that want to take that next step. What better day than Easter to make such a special commitment? We hope you and your family come to celebrate with us during this Easter season. A night to honor and pray for Israel will be on Sunday, April 7th at 5 p.m. With 130 hostages still in captivity, there's never been a more important time to pray for the people of Israel. On April 12th at 6 p.m., we will be hosting a Night of Hope, a dinner to benefit the Lord's Kitchen Ministries. This event is a celebration of our collective efforts to make a difference in our community. To purchase a ticket or sponsor a table, go to thelordskitchenministries.com. Guest speaker Mark Hankins will be with us April 14th and 15th, Sunday for all service times and Monday at 6 p.m. These will be two days of powerful ministry and encouragement. ORU Evangel is having a Get Started meeting for interested students on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. at Evangel North Church in Clarksville, Indiana. ORU Evangel offers affordable, world-class, spirit-empowered degrees, including business administration, Christian counseling, Christian leadership and ministry, and so many more. This meeting is geared towards graduating high schoolers and adults ready to fulfill God's plan by getting a degree. Scholarships will be given away during the meeting, so make plans to attend. The Evangel Prison Ministry will be holding a Lady Spring Luncheon on Saturday, April 20th at noon in the Evangel Billtown Sanctuary. There will be a derby hat auction, delicious food, and a powerful word from guest speaker Sherry Holt. If you would like to attend or host a table, please call the Prison Ministry Office at 502-231-9100, extension 1228. Dr. Hendrick Forster will be with us on April 21st through the 23rd, Sunday for all service times, and Monday and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Dr. Forster has planted churches in 75 nations on six continents over the past 34 years. This will be a powerful time of impartation and teaching that will equip you to build the kingdom of God. We'll see you there. To keep up with all that's happening here at Evangel, stop by the Welcome Desk, follow us on social media, or head over to our website, ewpc.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good morning. It's great to see you on this Palm Sunday. We're so glad that you're here. I'd like to welcome those that may be here for the first time. This is your first opportunity to worship with us. We'd like to get a guest card to you. The ushers will be happy to bring it to you right where you're seated. If you'll just lift your hand, they'll come to you right now. Just hold it up there for a moment. And they'll be coming down the aisles as they do. When they see your hand, they'll provide you with that card. So let's give our guests a good hand of welcome today. Amen. If you have a moment, fill that out. If you're done before the offering, drop it in there. If not, you can always give it to an usher or take it to the welcome desk. God bless you. Hope you'll plan to be a part of all the things that we'll be talking about today. I want to share just a brief report about the Evangel Christian School basketball team. We're extremely proud of them. They made it to the semifinals. Give them a good hand. They did a great job, uh, made it to the semifinals. Uh, in fact, uh, it's my understanding that they're the first non-Catholic Christian school to ever make it that far. Furthermore, the smallest school 
to ever make it that far. So praise the Lord. And they all did a great job. But here's what I want you to know about our team. All those players are born again. Uh, several of them, in fact, before the Sweet 16 began, were baptized in water in a baptismal service held at the school. I happened to have the opportunity to be there to witness that. And uh, they love the Lord. They participate in a weekly Bible study. And if you ever get a chance to go back and look at some of the press conferences through, through the tournament that they did, they will make you very proud of, uh, first, our coach, Coach Larry Miller, and and then the players that all spoke extremely well and uh, had a good, humble attitude all the way through. When the winds were coming, uh, they still had their attitudes in the right place. And even after uh, not going quite as far, almost, but not quite as far as they wanted to, we're very, very proud of them and appreciate them. Give another great hand. Amen. I uh, want to mention just a couple things. Uh, first of all, don't forget tonight. It's going to be a very special service. Uh, we're having a Passover emphasis, and our guest speaker will be Dr. Roger Hoagland, who's been right in the mix of what's been happening in Israel, helping families and providing for them, blessing them. But he's back home, and we'll be sharing tonight. And then afterwards, we're going to have a meal. It's not a ticketed meal. It's open to everyone. We will receive an offering to help defer the expenses of that, but we invite everyone to join in and be a part of that. And again, that'll happen after the service tonight. Because of that, I come to you once again and to all you gentlemen that uh, have helped us in the past. I'd like to ask if you would, after the service, once we've completely dismissed, given the Jesus shout, and folks have a little time to clear out. We're going to be flipping that back corner like we normally do. And your help would be appreciated. And then we want to mention our speeders are going to the Creation Museum this Thursday. They leave at 9 a.m. And Pastor Paul said this is actually open not just to our speeders, but to anyone who would like to go. Uh, you can come 9 a.m. out front here of the church. And it's $60 for the Creation Museum, plus whatever you would like to spend on lunch. So we make you aware of that. And then, of course, don't forget Good Friday. We're going to have a great service here at 6 o'clock. And then we'll go outside for our Good Friday Festival. We'll have food trucks. We've got a, a great gospel singing group, Crimson Chord, that'll be actually singing outdoors uh, during this time. And then we have course, the egg hunt for the children and some other activities, egg Olympics, they're calling them, that'll be happening as well. Then we go to Easter sunrise service, 7 a.m. Don't forget it. It's going to be happening over at the venue. Uh, there's going to be a message shared called the four witnesses. So we invite you to come out and enjoy that time. We'll have communion there as well. And then 9 and 11 a.m. Easter service is right here. We're baptizing in water. If you don't mind, if you intend to be baptized, sign up at the welcome desk. It'll help us to prepare properly. And then uh, we'll be dismissing the evening service next Sunday on Easter. So we're looking forward to a great time. And then back at the tables, you'll find the card for the Night of Hope that's coming up in support of the Lord's Kitchen Ministries, Corner of Hope, and all that happens there. I encourage you to take one of those cards uh, scan the QR code, take a look at possibly sponsoring a table or uh, buying a ticket and plan to come and be a part of a great evening that will be happening right here at this location. If you would, help me welcome our pastor as he comes. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. In the first service, I had a grandmother come to see me she has a grandson who had brain surgery, and he's really struggling. So he came over here to the church, and they were walking around the property, and they went to the back, to the gymnasium, and the basketball team, they were practicing. So they went in, and uh, he was watching it, and they, uh, he had a calendar, and all the basketball players signed the calendar. Well, this just gave him hope. This gave him, and he started following the basketball team. And when they went to the state tournament, you would have thought Jesus had arrived here on earth. 
and uh, he cheered for them, exciting. He's facing another surgery. But you never know what uh, kindness can do, to, especially to young, young kids. And uh, I think you ought to give that ball team another great big hand of appreciation. Amen. Um, you've come to a service today that is going to be unlike uh, some services you've ever been in. Because we're believing for an impartation of a miraculous move of God. And also, I'll share about the times we're in. We've never faced this before. And this may be the most important Passover, Easter season that you've ever been a part. And I'll share about that. And so, a part of that, though, is bringing uh, an offering, uh, a Passover offering, an Easter offering. And so uh, we'll not be receiving our seed offering, we'll be receiving our tithe. And then at the conclusion, when we participate in this uh, prophetic um, part of the service, you can bring your offering. So I'm gonna ask the ushers to give out to everyone a seed envelope that you can use at the conclusion. So ushers, if you would do that at this time. I have a minister friend, his name's Randy. The fact is he's helped us in Israel a number of times. He, uh, he was working out at the gym and he saw a man, they got talking to him and uh, this fellow told him he had a, uh, a ministry that he helped troubled kids. And he told what he was doing. Well, he didn't know, this fellow didn't know Randy was a minister, had no clue. And he said he felt like God spoke to him and urged him. So he went to him and he said, I want to give $1,000. I want to plant a seed in your ministry, what you're doing. So the man was very thankful. Sometime after that, shortly after that, Randy's daughter-in-law, who was pregnant, begin to have real problems. And the fact is, they thought the baby was dead, and they uh, delivered the baby, a forced delivery, at six months. They said if the baby is alive, it doesn't have any lungs, but when it came out, it was crying. It was smaller than a Barbie doll. And um, even now, after about six weeks, her little legs are about the size of your pinky finger, but she's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. But the bills are over $400,000. And so he's back at the gym and he sees this fella and they're talking and he shares with him about his daughter-in-law and about the bills. And his friend says, well, you know, I don't think I've told you what I do. He said, I don't know if you believe in God. But let me just tell you this. He said, I have had an office at the United States Post Office and uh, my department, we have, um, we make provision for babies who are born underweight and are preemies. And I'm gonna take care of that bill. You won't have to pay a penny. We'll cover it in our office. <laughs> now, when we talk about planting seed, what happens is the Bible says in Philippians 4 that we have an account in heaven, an account. And our God will supply all of our needs. So when you give, sometimes you don't see an immediate response, but that money goes to your account. And the interest we get in heaven is a thousand times more, 25,000 times more. It is operated by God. And so then when a situation arises, God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So today, as we receive the offering, this is not a gift. You're not giving a gift. A gift has nothing in return, but you're bringing a seed to God that God will take down, press down, shake it together, and give it back at the time of your need running over. Amen? Amen. 
So this may be one of the most miracle times of your life. This is why I've never hesitated, regardless of what my financial situation, when it came to my tithe, my tithe, I've always paid that off the top and brought my offerings. So uh, today we'll receive the offering uh, at the conclusion, your seed, uh, your, a special seed for Easter. We bring Easter offerings, and some of you, um, maybe if you didn't bring it this week, you want to bring it next week. God says on, when these days come, we're not to come empty-handed. Also, if you made special faith pledges after um, the fast, we said uh, you can get it in by Easter, so this would be your opportunity. Let's all stand, everybody standing. Turn your attention to our screens as we make this proclamation together. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty-handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. The devourer is rebuked for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessings. By faith, I have a better job, promotions, raises, bonuses, and benefits, business opportunities, sales, and commission increases, inheritances, rebates, settlements, and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalties, and scholarships, gifts, surprises, and newfound monies. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have the anointing for blessings, equipping me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God's upon me and everything I put my hand to will prosper. I'm a cheerful giver, sowing in good ground that's bringing souls into the kingdom of God and my God supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you take your seed and hold it to the Lord? I want you to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, this is my seed. I give in faith today for a miracle to happen in my family, with my children, with my finances, with every dream and hope. I plant this seed in Jesus' name. Now, before you're seated, I want you to look at that seed and I want you to speak to it. I want to, Jesus spoke to trees. He spoke to the wind. So you speak to your seed and you say, you are going to, you're a seed for a healing. You're a seed for a business opportunity. You're a seed for my kids, for a miracle. Speak to it right now. Just look at that seed and talk to it in Jesus' name. You may be seated. God bless these ushers today. Praise God. Now give them a great big hand. Didn't they do good? Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me, please? Take your Bible, hold it to the Lord, 
If you don't have a Bible, hold your hand up to the Lord. But I want everyone to say with me, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. It's a road map to heaven. It shows me how to get healed. It shows me how to get a good wife. How to be a better husband. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In Jesus' name. As you remain standing, turn with me please to the book of Matthew chapter 21. I want to begin reading in verse 6. I want you to follow with me as I read. This is the story of Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead. So follow with me. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and he brought the ass and the coat and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and he cast out all them that sowed and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sowed doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. Jesus told his disciples uh, to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 3, that they were to go and they were to borrow this ass and this coat. He said, you'll, you'll find them. God gave them a word of knowledge where they were. So they went and they brought this, this donkey and they put their clothes on it and Jesus got on the donkey. And then he began, they began to lead him into uh, Jerusalem. It was a number of miles and uh, as he did, the people came out and began to worship him. They cut down palm branches. That's why we call it Palm Sunday. And they laid them down in the path before the donkey. They took their clothes. They laid it down. And they began to celebrate and honor Jesus and worshiped him as the king. And so he came and they brought him to the temple, to the temple mount. Now, the Bible teaches us that that's where the presence of God was. It was in the holies of holies. So if you wanted to know where the God of the Jewish people was, he lived in the temple. But our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. After the death and resurrection of Christ, God's presence moved ad addresses. It moved out of that temple into our bodies. So the Bible says our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus went into the temple, he did certain things. And I want you to equate that today when you accept Jesus into your life as what Jesus did in the physical temple, he'll do the same thing in your temple or in your life. So he goes into the temple and there were people that were, were acting against the law of God. They were wicked, they were money changers, they were cheating people. And the Bible says he drove them out. He turned over those tables of these people and he cleansed the temple. 
Or in other words, the first thing that God does when he comes into your life, he makes you a house of purity. Say a house of purity. So Jesus cleans you up. He takes out of you those wicked things, those evil things, those, those things that uh, you're not proud of. He cleanses you, and the Bible says that he knew no sin. But what happens in the case with you when he was crucified, he takes his righteousness, and he trades you for your wickedness. So you give him your wickedness, and he gives you his righteousness. And so I don't care if you've got habits, if you've got things, and you're, you still haven't arrived, you're headed for it, you are the righteousness of God. And you're no longer a sinner. Some people say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner, but when God gave you his righteousness, you became the righteousness of God in Christ. And he took your sins. So Satan wants to defile you. And when you reach a situation where you've sinned or you've been defiled, we repent of our sins. We ask God to forgive us. And once again, he takes the unrighteousness and he puts the righteousness back on us. And he leads us in the paths of righteousness. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And then the Bible says, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So in the book of Leviticus, say, I hate the book of Leviticus. <laughs> Most people have never read Leviticus. And, and if you are ever stumped and somebody wants to know where that scripture is, just tell them it's in the book of Leviticus. They don't know. They haven't read it either. <laughs> But in the book of Leviticus, about the 14th chapter, there's a story about the law of the, uh, of the uh, uh, I call it the life of the, the law of the unbroken prayer life, but it's the law of the burnt offering. So what happened was when they started the fire on the altar, God started the fire. It wasn't a uh, priest got in there and they... They were, had matches, or they, they had, uh, you know, they, they built the wood, and then they put the fire under it. That did not happen. They would put the wood there, and then fire fell from heaven. That's, a, that's an amazing thing. And so when Elijah, when he was up on the mount with the, with the prophets of Baal, he built an altar, and then fire fell from heaven just like it did at the, uh, at the temple. And so God started the fire, but it was up to the priests to keep the fire burning. And so it had this procedure, it's called the law of the burnt offerings, how they would go in every day, they would take the ashes out, they would put fresh, uh, fresh wood on it and sacrifices. It's a whole process. Well, that's the same with us. God starts the fire, but it's up to us to keep the fire burning. And if you don't pray, and if you don't read the word of God, the fire will go out. I don't care who you are. It has to be every day. I, I was listening to the coach of the University of uh, Tennessee, the basketball coach. I saw him last night. And he was talking about how he will not leave his house until he reads the Bible and gets a fresh word from God. And he says, I tell my players every day to let the word of God come alive into you. And he goes forth. You know, those are the kind of guys I'd like my son or like my family member to, to play for. So it's the word of God. So first, your house becomes a house of purity. Secondly, it becomes a house of prayer. And then the Bible says they brought to him the lame and those that were hurting, and he healed them all. He healed them all. So now to the power of the Holy Spirit. And you need to receive the, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. God enables you to walk in the power of miracles. And the Bible says these signs will follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. 
It lists five things. One of the last is to heal the sick, but you have power over demons. Demons attack your children. They attack your money. They attack your, your well-being. But you have authority over all of that through the power of the Holy Spirit. I remember one guy told me, man, they were talking about those devils. I, I didn't want to have any part of that. I wanted to get away from that. Why? Why? The devil wants to get away from you. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Hallelujah to Jesus. So you have power. You have power to break every curse, every hex, every wicked thing that comes against you. You have power. You tell the devil to get out of your house. Take your hands off your family. Take your hands off your finances. Hallelujah to Jesus. So you become a house of purity. Then you become a house of prayer. Then you become a house of power. And then you become a house of praise. The Bible says, and the people begin to worship and praise God, and it displeased the religious people. I tell you, when you begin to develop a praise attitude and a thankful attitude, that's what gets the attention of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Margaret, sitting right over here to my left, when Margaret and I had a revelation of the feast days, it was a life changer for us. I'm talking a life changing experience because we begin to see things um, in a different way. Uh, the Bible talks about in Exodus and it talks about it in Leviticus and it's carried through all through the Bible about God set aside three times a year that he would come and visit them and they were, there were seven feast days broken in those three times a year. Jesus is the fulfillment of those feast days, and they became holy days, holy days. And I say that because we're entering into this holy time, this holy time. Now, if I were to invite a, a major healing minister, and he came here, and he just had miracles after miracles after miracles. When you came here, you would expect to have miracles. If uh, you had Billy Graham here, you'd expect people to get saved. You'd bring them to be saved. Well, when you came to the feast, the holy days, you expected miracles to show up because God says, when you come to those meetings, I'm going to bless you financially. I'm going to send an angel. So be sure and bring an offering. He said, I will heal you. I'll be an enemy to your enemies. I will prosper you. If you can't get pregnant, you'll get pregnant. None will die before their times. I'll lengthen your life. And every dream and hope you have will be fulfilled. Seven major promises he promised. And so the people came by the millions. On the day of Pentecost, which is one of those feast days, when the day of Pentecost was poured out, they estimate there was over a million people that came to Jerusalem. So they expected something to happen. And one of the major things that you have to understand, and I want every person to understand this, that the calendar that we have is the Roman calendar based on the sun, 365 days. The Bible calendar, and some people call it the Jewish calendar, but it's not the Jewish calendar. They just use that calendar, so that's why people relate to it. But it's the Bible calendar is based on 360 days, five days less. And the reason is, is because the moon is a reflection of the sun. And we, which have no goodness in us, we become a reflection of Jesus Christ a reflection of the favor of God. So in the Bible, in Genesis 1.14, it says God gave the sun and the moon for signs and for seasons. So people translate that, well, that was given for uh, July, uh, you know, summer and, and the first day of spring and winter. That's what it was given for. And, and truly, we, we do have those seasons. But 
the meaning in the Bible for signs is it signals. Signals from God to warn people. And seasons is spelled M-O-E-D-I-M in the Hebrew, which is appointed times for God to move in your life. And honestly, it is related to the feast days. And most of these feast days begin on a full moon. And they begin during the times of the alignment of the sun and the moon. And so you cannot understand Bible prophecy unless you begin to understand these feast days and these holy days. And so then God also said there are special events that happen that are not just coincidences that people who don't know the Bible would think. For instance, when there are eclipses, there's an eclipse and then there are earthquakes. This, this is another sign, but when they take place during a holy day, something big is going to happen. Now, I say that because uh, next week's Easter, but that's on the Roman calendar. On the Bible calendar, Easter or the Passover, and Easter is our, the Christian Passover, it takes place April 22. And it's the 14th day of Nisan, which is this month of miracles. The first of Nisan takes place on April the 8th. Uh, on April the 7th, and I don't think this is coincidence, we're having a night to pray and honor Israel. And then the next day starts this first day of Nisan. But also is amazing, this is when there's going to be a huge eclipse an eclipse that uh, is going to go all the way across America. And if you read with all these statistics, it, it goes through uh, a bunch of cities named Salem, which is the ancient name for Jerusalem. It goes through a bunch of cities named uh, Nineveh and even goes through a town named Jonah. Now, is that a coincidence? I don't think maybe it is a coincidence. Now, here's what is an amazing fact. These are facts. Whenever there has been an eclipse and it's been associated with America and uh, amazing things have, uh, have taken place. For instance, there was an eclipse during the holy days when uh, just before the Revolutionary War. And then there was an eclipse during the time of Passover, just before the Civil War. The same took place in the Vietnam War. When that happened, there was this eclipse. And then it was the same in uh, 1948, the year Israel became a nation. There were these holy days, and there was an eclipse. The same took place in 1967. There came this six day war and the Israelis took back the city of Jerusalem. So the fulfillment that it was no longer under rule of the Gentiles was fulfilled. And so it's an amazing thing that it also happened in 1811 and 12. I say 1811 and 12 because uh, there was this eclipse, and then the biggest earthquake that ever took place in America took place just a, a little over 100 miles, about 150 miles from here. It was called the, the, um, the Mandred Fault. Take place down there by Paducah. And uh, if it would happen today, it was 8.2 on the Richter scale, it would have destroyed they say every building, major building, in 200 miles. It, uh, the, old, the Mississippi River flowed backwards, and when it flowed forwards again, there was a guy who had a farm in Kentucky, and he woke up, he was in Missouri. 
the river went on the other side of his farm. They, they felt bells rang in Washington, D.C. And what is something amazing as well, this, uh, this line of this eclipse is going right over the Madrid Fault again. So when we talk about it happening for a time of the, of the Passover, and it's the first day of Nisan. Nisan's this month, this, this uh, month in the Bible. And on the 14th day of Nisan, that's when they went out and they were victorious. So on the first day of Nisan, it's interesting, that's the day Ezra brought the children of Israel out of, um, out of Babylon. That's when the exodus happened, where Pharaoh was destroyed. That is the day that Jesus went into the temple. And I just shared that story, how he cleansed the temple. He drove out the money changers. That was the first day of Nisan. And then when uh, Jesus was baptized, that was the first day of Nisan. And so this always has represented something big going to happen. So you say, Pastor, what does all this mean? I have no clue. <laughs> but I think it means that I need to be squeaky clean and I need to be ready for whatever takes place. Amen? Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Now I want to share what is amazing right now and how this all comes together and why I think this is probably the most um, biblical time that anybody's been alive. First of all, there's a Ramadan. Ramadan is the name of a month with the Muslims, just like July is the name of the month, January is the name of a month. Ramadan is the name that the Muslims have for a month, and it's the month of death. It's the month of jihad. What you saw took place in Russia was jihad. And if they'll do that in Russia, they'll do it right here in the United States. It's a month of death. It's right now during this eclipse time. Secondly, this is a time of a Russia having a war with the Ukraine that many are saying could develop into World War III or could develop into what would lead to the Battle of Armageddon. Thirdly, it's a time when Israel is at war with Hamas. And it's interesting that, that the war started on a holy day and it's very possible that those hostages could be released during this time before Passover. It's very possible. And then this is a time when our government is at high alert because we've had an invasion of over 80,000 military age men from China, from Syria, from the Middle East that hate our country. Sometimes I wonder if our government knows things that we don't know and they don't want us to know. But I know things that our government doesn't know. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> then this is a time of the Passover. It's a time of this eclipse. And I believe this is a signal. I believe this is a message from God that something big is going to happen. So the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, if you don't know how to spell Ezekiel, join the club. Uh, if you'll call it Ezekiel, you can spell it easier phonetically. But in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, the Bible says that God sent these angels and they had with them a weapon of death. 
there were eight angels and seven of them had this weapon of death. And they were to go through the city and destroy the wicked. But there was one angel that did not have that weapon of death. He had a, a, a pen and an ink, uh, an ink that would carry the ink. And he would go through and he would spot people. And if they prayed, if they were people of God and prayed for Israel, he'd place a mark on their head. Just like this, uh, this, uh, um, you know, we had a, th this is a sister eclipse. Uh, there was one in 2014 and 15. Remember that? When that happened, in 14 and 15 first, and then one in 17. And we're sister, the sister one is the 17, but in 14, in 2014, 15, there was, there was nothing that happened. You know, I was preaching something would happen. Nothing happened. <laughs> But later, guess what? ISIS jumped up. We never had ISIS before. And then suddenly, this Ebola thing hit. Remember that? That was right after that eclipse. And then guess what? The first attack of Hamas against Israel, that happened. All that happened then. And then we had, that's when we started having this racial issue, hit such a peak that... It, uh, it caused the defunding of police. That happened right after an eclipse. Yes. Well, this thing that happened in 2017, which you're right, is the sister eclipse to this one. And it moved across our country. After that, we had this 2000, we, we had this uh, COVID-19 thing. Right. So when these eclipses come and they come on these... Uh, these holy days, it's something usually happens. So God sends this angel. He said, David, I'm going to mark her, but I'm not marking you. You've been a bad boy. No. He, he plays, places a mark. He places a mark. And so things wouldn't begin to happen. They won't happen to you. It won't come upon you. And that's why I think that God has um, allowed us to have this night to honor Israel the day before this eclipse comes, the day before Nisan 1. We didn't plan it that way. We were looking at the calendar. We were looking at a bunch of dates. Jill, is that you? I love you, Jill. What did I call it? It's a new Madrid. She lives down there right on the new Madrid spot. That's why she's up here today. She's looking for a place to move to. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, God, I believe, ordained us to have it on the 7th. And I tell you, I'd be here for that meeting. I just believe something good's going to happen. But... Today, we've come here. This is why we've done this today. Because I believe there's going to be a supernatural impartation upon every one of you that will receive it. And the way you receive it is when you come through here, you say, Lord, I receive this in the name of Jesus. That's how you receive it. And so you just don't come through here and walk through this. You, you let God touch you. So you come here, and the first thing you do you bring a seed. That's up to you. But there's a special blessing. If you don't have it this week, you can bring it next Sunday. But we bring a special offering for each of these feasts. Then we take of the communion. Now, we're using matzah bread. This bread is without uh, leaven. And so it's a, it's a picture of of no sin, the sin's taken out. And Jesus became the fulfillment of the feast of unleavened bread. He was without sin. So if you look at this bread, you see the stripes in it? Do you see that? That represents the stripes that he took on his back. And that by his stripes were healed. And then there's little holes through here. It represents the piercings. A piercing in his side, in his hands, in his feet, in his head. So the Bible says that when you take of the communion and you eat the bread, that by his stripes were healed. 
So when you eat this, Father, I speak healing now. I receive your healing presence, your healing touch. Then you drink of the cup, and the cup represents the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and breaks every demonic hold on our life. So then you move to the next, and this, these are apples that are dipped in honey. There's honey all through here, and so you take this and you eat it, and it's a picture of the victory that you have. The honey is sweet to your taste, and the apple is fruit, it's strength, it's increase upon you, and the blessing of God to succeed and be blessed. And so, in the midst of trouble, that doesn't apply to us. We go by a different beat. Hallelujah. Then, next is a cross. I want you to get one of these crosses. These are little crosses. They fit in your billfold. They fit in your purse. It's got a place you can even put a chain on it. These are olive wood crosses. They're real small. And it's a picture of the victory that Jesus won. So you, you reach down, I've got power over the devil. No weapon formed against me will pros prosper. I have power to condemn whatever Satan would try to bring on me. And then lastly, here is a, here's a palm branch. This palm branch is a picture of prosperity and your ability to survive when nobody else can make it. You, the Bible says the righteous shall flourish like the palm trees and they shall grow up as the cedars of Lebanon. There's a story in the Bible in Exodus how uh, the children of Israel were without water and they came and they saw in the distance palm trees. There were 70 palm trees and when they got there, there were 12 wells. It was called Elam and they camped around that. So when nothing else survives, in the middle of the desert, there's palm trees. You're a palm tree. I'm a palm tree. And when you get this, you take this over and say, I don't care what happens to anybody else. I'm going to make it. Put that in your front yard. Put it up there by the house. Stick it there in the grass. It's just a, it's just a message to the devil. Hey, you're in trouble. I'm not the one that's in trouble. Amen. And so what, what we're going to do in just a minute, we're going to split. If you're on this side, you'll move over to that wall. If you're on this side, you'll move over to that wall. Our, our pastors, our ministers will come. The fact is I want them to come now and take their place. Those will help serve. And what we're going to do, you'll come through here, and they're going to, they're going to pray for you. They're going to pray for everybody here. They're going to pray for your children, whoever you've got with you. Some, some might even have a prophetic word or a scripture or a word of encouragement. They're going to pray for you. And then you'll move over to one of these tables and uh, you will plant your seed. You'll, be, you'll take the communion. You'll eat of the apple. you take the cross. You take the palm tree. And you thank God. Hallelujah. I want everybody to stand and place your hand over your heart. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, make me squeaky clean. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but with God's help, I'm going to live right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to treat people right. And I want to be right with you more than anything else. Take out of me today unforgiveness, wrong attitudes, every addiction, everything Satan has used to hold me back, take out wrong desires, change my nature that I might be the righteousness of God. Now lay your hand right here on your chest. I come against every disease, every sickness, every attack on your life. And I rebuke it, I bind it, I cast it, cast it out of you in the name of Jesus. You'll not be sick. You'll not have cancer. You'll not be destroyed and die before your time. But in Jesus' name, I rebuke the devil off of you. 
off of your family, off your children, off your finances. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be blessed for the glory of God. Lay your hand on your head. I speak the knowledge of God, the mind of Christ. May your thoughts be directed by the Holy Spirit. May you perceive the leading of the Holy Ghost. May God speak to you. May every decision you make be the right decision in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I bless every person here when they go through that line. May you speak to every person. Not, may, may there not be one person that you don't give direction and guidance to. And then when they partake of this, they plant their seed, they, they eat of the elements, may something supernatural go into them. May the Word of God go into them. May they be quickened by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may miracles happen for the glory of God. Hallelujah. If you're in this section over on my left, just over in those, I want you to move over. These sections over here, move over. Move over all the way to the back. Just move to the walls. Then I want this middle section to line up behind them. The same to my right. If you're over here, begin to move to the walls. Begin to move over. They're in the back. Move over. This middle section, go over and get, get in that line as well. These worshipers are going to lead us in praise. And as, as they lead us, you may want to sing along with them. But there's a presence of God here today. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. The anointing falls when you lift your hands up. Father, may there be an anointing of peace and power and victory for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Begin to come now. Begin to come. Begin to come on either side. Begin to move forward. Hallelujah.
Sing along with them.
with me, everyone. Let's sing that song once again. What can of someone next to you. Father, today we come into agreement. Lord, in Jesus' name, may your presence, may your anointing be upon each one. Father, we speak the victory of God over our families, over our home. I want you to begin to speak out loud, every member of your family, to God. I want you to just call their name out. Father, in Jesus' name, your will, your plan, your purpose for every member of our household. Father, we break off the wrong friends, addictions, situations our families have gotten into, away from God. And Father, I call a harvest of souls for our family. And Lord, during this time, during this Passover season, during this Easter time, Lord, may our kids come to Christ. May there be a revelation of the power of Jesus, Lord. Father, we cover them now with the blood of Jesus. Come on, begin to break every curse. Begin to break every hex that's come against your family. Every evil attack on your home. Begin to speak the opposite in Jesus' name. We declare all of our children shall serve the Lord. Not a one shall be lost. Every addiction, every sickness, every weakness is broken in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I bless those on the right of me. I come against every wicked attack an evil power that's come against you or your family. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Now, devil, get out of their house. Take your hand off of every member of their home. I speak victory in your house. A presence of Jesus and peace in the name of the Lord. I pray for you on the left of me. I speak God's anointing, God's healing, God's prosperity. None of your family will be poor. None of them will go hungry, nor be in lack. But God shall supply every need. He shall meet them in abundance. I declare you'll be the head and not the tail. Your children will rise higher than you've risen. May this be a season of a mighty move of God. Now I forgive everybody. I don't have any enemies except the devil. Lord, bless those all around me. And may I be an influence for good and for the kingdom of God. Amen. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap today. Hallelujah. All oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I sense the peace of the Lord. I was praying one day, and I was praying the, the names of the Lord. I was hallowing those names. And I came to the name of Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is my healer. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, lift your hands, and I'll release the presence of healing. Lift your hands right now. 
Lift your hands. Lord, may there be a presence of healing. Healing physically, healing spiritually, healing mentally, healing in our families, a healing presence. May it come upon us. As we leave here, may there be a fragrance about us. Just like some expensive perfume that people smell and they're attracted to, may there be a fragrance of your blessing and healing power. And everyone we come in contact with, may they be healed and set free and blessed in Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, we're going to have a Passover celebration meal. It will not be totally kosher, and you will thank me for that, but it will be a blessing. So don't go out and fill up and come back here not hungry. Just go to Chick-fil-A. They're closed. They're not open. <laughs> but it'll whet your appetite for tonight. Hallelujah. It's going to be a great time. And so, how many enjoyed today's service? Did you enjoy that? How many were blessed? Come on, hold your hand up if you're blessed. I was blessed. I praise God. We're going to go out of here with a shout. We're going to shout the name of Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus! 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 God bless you. Amen.